Hello, hello, amazing women in the Ayurveda and women's health sisterhood. I hope you're all having a wonderful today. As promised, I'm bringing you a live training on how to improve your relationships by balancing your hormones. And I thought about doing this training basically because as an Ayurveda and women's health practitioner, I've seen a lot of women who have come in obviously with hormonal imbalances and have told me that it's really impacting their relationships. So when we dive a little deeper into this, we come up with some strategies on how we can individually help the, the woman, but also show up as their best self in their relationships as well. So I guess I want to start by asking you, how many times have you gone from the chill, cool mom into a fit of rage because your kids or husband did something really silly um, that pulled your trigger? And then after the screaming match, you're left feeling really guilty, shameful, and angry at yourself for not controlling your emotions better. I mean, we try to teach our kids how to regulate their emotions and actions, telling them to stop crying over something silly or to dust it off, but we can't even do it for ourselves all of the time. And this is really, really frustrating for a lot of women who are going through um, this type of thing. Then we often trap ourselves in a vortex of negative self-talk. We ask ourselves, like, what kind of example am I? Am I screwing up my kids? Does my husband think I'm a crazy woman? Why can't I be the fun and joyous mother like I used to be or partner like I used to be? So now don't get me wrong. I don't want to make excuses for poor behavior, but sometimes there is a pressing reason that needs attention and can be fixed. So you're not crazy after all. It's your hormones. <laughs> and especially for perimenopausal hormonal women with the shift in their hormones, and that can occur from the age of about 35 and upwards. Um, and there is a, a big fluctuation of hormones going on. And especially for women who have actually been diagnosed with PMDD, which is premenstrual dysphoria disorder. So though these women, um, they they might their hormones might not even be too imbalanced. They may have regular hormones, but as a cyclical women, our hormones shift and fluctuate. And with that fluctuation, they're highly sensitive to those changes, and they can get a lot of emotional and mental distress with the fluctuations, and also um, a lot of physical signs and symptoms. So women who um, have PMDD. It is um, really, I guess this is really important for you guys, um, but anyone else who has hormonal imbalances that are creating a little bit of havoc in their lives. So basically hormones are chemical messengers that control a lot of our physiological and psychological reactions in the mind and the body. So when they become aggravated or imbalanced, or the messenger system stops working properly, a cascade of events will occur that can affect your physical, mental, and emotional function. So when I say balance your hormones to improve your relationships, I am not joking, guys. Today, I'm going to share with you three things that you can do to help manage your hormones and improve your relationships without having to go to family counseling. So my clients have reported that by taking these steps, they have been able to enjoy more time with their kids and be seen as the fun mom. They get their spark back and improve their sex life with their partner. They feel more control of their actions and become less reactive. And they stop doubting themselves as a mother, knowing that they are showing up as their best self most of the time. And look, guys, to be honest, we're all human. We're not going to show up as our best self 24-7 because despite the hormonal factor, we are still the having a human existence in this life. But if we can show up as our best self most of the time, that will be a great step forward for a lot of us. So here are some factors that we need to look at why our hormones may be imbalanced and how we can help correct that imbalanced state. So first of all, obviously we need to really optimize our health and our hormones by looking at the root cause of what the imbalance is. We're all so individual and our, the root cause can be very different for everybody. 
What I see as common culprits when working with women in my Ayurveda and women's health clinic is one, poor gut and liver health. So our gut and our liver have a huge role to play in estrogen detoxification pathways and also our serotonin levels and the chemical messengers that go from our gut to our brain to create that neuro happiness, our dopamine um, receptors and our GABA hormone as well. So when someone comes in with hormonal imbalances, we always want to look and address the gut health as well as the liver health. Another reason is nutritional deficiencies. So some women are really low in iron, selenium and iodine, and they're really important for the thyroid function, as well as vitamin Bs, um, magnesium, like magnesium is really important for our stress response, um, and vitamin D. Vitamin D is actually a hormone. So when you have nutritional deficiencies, our hormones can't function properly. So often we need to start to treat that underlining cause, which may be a nutritional deficiency. So it's really important to find out if you're deficient in any um, of our important nutrients. And obviously we can get them through our, our food and that's how we want to um, consume our vitamins and minerals. Vitamin D comes from the sun. But if you have poor gut integrity, leaky gut, poor gut health, then often you're not absorbing all of the nutrients properly. Or if you're not having a fully balanced diet, you're not absorbing all of the nutrients properly either. And so sometimes we do need to supplement until we can get that holistic picture of health um, into play. The other factor that I see a lot is our environment, and that is your home and your work environment. Now, I just did a training on this with a lovely lady um, about feng shui your way to health and abundance, and we did talk a lot about our external environment. And I said, like, I know for me, it's really true that if my internal um, external environment is really cluttered and messy... Um, it can be really stressful on the inside. And one of the biggest drivers for hormonal imbalance is constant chronic stress. So eliminating any stresses in your life, which could be your environment, is a really, really big um, game changer. When we talk about our external environment, we also want to think about the the toxic levels that it might hold, like has the house got mold in it? Um, uh, you know, is there a lot of um, toxic fumes coming in through the windows? So when we look at the environment, we look at it from that really holistic level. And as I alluded to just before, stress and emotional health are a huge factor in hormonal imbalance. Like I can't I can't underemphasize that enough or overemphasize it enough, I should say, because it like when we're talking about hormonal imbalance, we're talking about we can have an imbalanced state, say, between our sex hormones, so our estrogen and our progesterone and our other sex hormones. But one of the biggest factors is having a a hormonal imbalance that occurs between our sex hormones and our stress hormones, like our cortisol level. Now, it's important to note that cortisol actually uses the same receptor sites as progesterone, and progesterone is one of our keep calm and happy hormones, right? Um, so that, you know, when we are highly stressed, our body shuts down a lot of our non, um, non-emergent functions, and that would be our re- our ovulation, our reproductive system, and we need ovulation to create progesterone. And then when we do have an ovulation and we do create a bit of progesterone, sometimes our bossy cortisol thinks it knows better and it's trying to save our life in moments of stress. And so it actually starts to attach to the progesterone receptor sites. And therefore there's free progesterone floating around, but it's not attached to the site. So it's not um, starting off that cascade of chemical messengers that we need hormones to do. So it is really important on so many levels to monitor our, our stress and our emotional health because this really helps to keep our hormones at bay and in a nice balanced state. 
High levels of cortisol from stress also creates a low level inflammation throughout our whole body, which also inhibits the chemical messengers um, and creates that imbalanced state. So anytime um, that there is that sort of low level of inflammation in, in the body, that is another stressor on the body. So it's kind of like this cascade of events that happens when we don't manage our stress and our emotional health. And then that also leads me to actually having a poor stress response to just everyday stresses or um, what we perceive to be emergent stresses. And the way we combat that is we really want to tone the vagus nerve. Our vagus nerve goes right through from our, our GI system. So throughout from our gut all the way into our brain and the chemical messengers, the hormones travel along um, the the vagus nerve to supply messages to the brain um so when this is overstimulated a lot by stress response it goes quickly into that flight mode and sometimes it we start to our central nervous system starts to react before we even realize that we're reacting and this keeps us in that chronic state of stress constantly and as i mentioned that creates a hormonal imbalance the other factor is hidden low-lying infections and autoimmune conditions. So low-grade, this again creates that low-grade inflammation and this cascade of stress response in the mind and the body. And then the other one would be food intolerances. Again, food intolerances, they contribute to inflammation in the body. And so any inflammation in the body is a stress in the body. One thing I see all the time is that when women are trying to optimize their health, they're only addressing one aspect of themselves or they're not recognizing, as I've listed, all of these many things that um, can create that hormonal imbalance. But we can see that our hormones and our relationships, they will be impacted by our emotional, mental and spiritual state. So from that big list I just gave you, a lot of it was around stress and our emotional state, as well as different physical things that we can combat. And then if we can't sort of harness all of this, our hormones, when they're imbalanced and they the chemical messengers have, have gone away and we start to react really quickly and overreact to things, this will impact our relationships. So if I was going to give you a tip or as to where you can start, I would look at the list um, of potentially underlining causes and start working on the one that resonates with you the most, the one that you think might be contributing to your hormonal imbalance. So that was the gut and liver health, the nutritional deficiencies, looking at your environment, Toxin exposure, did I say toxin exposure? So the mold and xenoestrogens, um, uh, stress and emotional health, poor stress response, hidden or low-lying infections and autoimmune conditions or food intolerances. So I would be thinking, which one of these can I address today to start helping me get into a more balanced state with my health and my hormones? Because we know that when we can optimize our holistic health, we can show up as our best self in all areas of our lives. Because when we have optimal health, we feel happy, we feel confident, we feel energized, we can show up and be that fun mom, that fun partner, and um, even show up to work with more enthusiasm and all of those type of things. So the number one strategy for balancing your hormones is optimizing holistic health, and that's looking at the root cause as well. And then the second, um, the second one I want to talk to you guys about when it comes to your hormones and how they, if you, basically if you don't control your hormones, they will control you, right? And when they're controlling you, you are not showing up as your best self and it's really hard to show up in your relationships, whether that be your relationship with your partner, your kids, your colleagues, your friends, like as your best self. And I'm sure we can all think back to a time when we've just had raging PMS and just feel pissed off at the world and have snapped and said something awful to our partner. And then we've gone out with our friends and we've been like, you know, not the best person to be around um and, or, or we have also been like snapping at the kids like I'm sure we can all think of times that this has happened 
So obviously we need to, as I mentioned, optimize that holistic health. But the next one is really to work on our mental shifts and our beliefs around who we are first and how we want to show up in our relationship. So like I said at the start, we don't want to use poor behavior as an excuse, although our hormones can start to dictate and, dictate and control some of our behaviors. We are the ones that are responsible for that. And we're the ones that are responsible for reining that in and understanding what is going on and how we can better ourselves. So to be able to show up wholeheartedly in a relationship, you really want to work on your own beliefs first, because if you're showing up with negative beliefs about yourself, or if you have had some sort of um, diagnosis to do with your hormones, then you take on that belief that that diagnosis is you. So that's one aspect. But if you were having beliefs around, you know, I'm, I snap at my kids and husband all the time. I'm not worthy enough for love. I'm not worthy enough for like a good relationship. I don't even know why they're with me. Like I'm, I'm just this awful person. If you keep telling yourself that, then that's the vibration that you're going to ooze into the relationships, right? And you don't, you don't want to be that person. Like you need to shift your own mindset first about who you are because you are an amazing human. You're an amazing woman. You have got amazing relationships in your lives. You need to look at evidence of that. And when you can start working on yourself first, then you can bring those mind shift into the, the relationship and you can set a really good example for the people around you. So once you work on your own empowering beliefs, so shifting from a disempowered belief about yourself or about your situation or about your hormones to an empowered belief, it changes your frequency and your vibration. And then when you can do that, then you can start to shift your beliefs around your relationship and how you want to show up for them. So it's really easy to fall into the trap of playing a role in our relationship. So we think, oh, I'm, I'm the mother, I'm the wife, I'm the carer, I'm the kitchen cook, I'm the taxi driver for all the kids, or I'm just the one that does all the things. And if we don't show up to those roles with some sort of joy or acceptance, then we start to resent them. So this is also another belief shift that we need to make around our role that we play in the relationship. Because we just need to show up as ourself. Yes, we do have these type of roles that we end up or these tasks that we're doing, but it doesn't define who we are. It doesn't define us as a person. They're just things that we do in a relationship. We want to show up as our most empowered self, our higher self in that relationship and accept that these are the things that we do to contribute, to help, to be of service. But we do that with acceptance. We do that with compassion. And at least we do not do it with resentment. We tend to get ourselves a lot of the time when we're, you know, if we haven't set boundaries in our relationships as well, and where we are sort of doing all the things and it feels really overwhelming, especially around this time of year, like when I'm going live here recording it, it's, it's near Christmas. So yeah, <laughs> we are doing a lot and it can be super, super overwhelming, but we've got to be really mindful to not um, put ourselves into that victim mentality of, oh, no one else can do it, you know, I'm doing all these things, especially if we haven't articulated our boundaries in our relationships. So a simple switch in the way that you think about your relationship and the way that you think about yourself, your beliefs about yourself and who you are and how you want to show up in your relationships can be a game changer for your relationships and your hormones an absolute game changer. So just things like it's, instead of saying to yourself, oh, I've got to pick up the kids and then I've got to cook dinner and then I've got to deal with their issues in the evening, which is making me exhausted. Try telling yourself, you know, I get to show up for my kids and my partner and I get to set healthy boundaries that protect my energy because I am in charge of my life. I'm in charge of my hormones. I'm in charge of how I show up in my relationships. And I am part of being in a relationship means that I get to have fun with my family. And yeah, that's not going to be every day. Like, you know, there are day-to-day -day activities we have to do, but I get to have fun. It's not a chore 
to be in a relationship. It is a treasure and it is a blessing to be in a relationship. And that's any type of relationship, whether that be with a partner, your children, your parents, whatever it is, any connection we get as human beings is an absolute blessing. So how do you want to show up to that? It is, you can tell yourself that it is really safe for you to be vulnerable, to be really open, to be honest and fully seen in your relationships. Because the more that you can communicate and the more that you can um, articulate what your boundaries are to protect your energy, the better your relationships will be. And that goes for your hormonal health as well. Like if you are in a relationship where your partner does not understand the hormonal cycle, then it's a really good chance to educate them. And that goes for your kids too. Like I, my kids, they're, they're boys, they're almost 11 and they're pretty up to date with the menstrual cycle and hormones because I share with them what part of the cycle I'm in and how I'm feeling. And it takes, it, you know, it takes a lot of pressure off yourself if you can be really honest and really true that, look, I'm feeling really tired and really lethargic. You know, my hormones are a little bit down at the moment, but it's okay. You know, this, this stage always passes. Just being really open and honest and educating your partner and your kids um, around your cycle. I think that is, is super, super important. And that also helps them sort of shift their beliefs around women's hormones and the cycle as well. And remember that when we can shift our thoughts around who we get to be and how we get to show up, then we can move into a state of feeling empowered, grounded and happy within ourselves and also within our relationships. So open communication is another big tip there. Also, I mentioned earlier how much of a role that stress plays in hormonal balances. So if you're having limiting beliefs around your relationship, this just adds more stress um, to your life and it impacts your hormones once again. So we can see how it's like this, a bit of this cascade of events that happen um, with stress and hormones and relationships. So I think we can get the underlying theme here. And remember that your body just sees stress as stress. It doesn't say, oh, that's my relationship stress. Oh, that's my inbox is too full stress. Or, oh, that's my negative self-talk stress. It just bundles it all together and the body will respond accordingly, right? So I think you really need to be aware of how your thoughts can trigger a stress response in your body as well. And Look, I totally understand that relationships can be hard and stressful. I can really understand that. I'm in relationships um, and I'm only human. But you still need to make an effort to show up as the person you want to be, regardless of how the other person is showing up. And this can be a big thing. Like sometimes it takes a lot of work on yourself and to really work through your limiting beliefs and show up as the best person you can be despite how the other person is showing up. But after a while, generally, they will start to meet your vibrational match and they will start to show up as a better version of themselves as well because it always takes two or three to tango or whatever it might be. But it is much better for you to lift the vibrational state of your relationship rather than match it if it's running at a low frequency. Okay, but that doesn't mean that you don't set and communicate your boundaries as this will protect your energy so that you can show up as your higher self in your relationship. And I really think that that is another huge thing that I see with a lot of women is that they are saying that they're having to do all these things and they always put themselves last um, and they then feel really resentful about that. But they haven't articulated their boundaries or what's going to help them in the moment. So their family is none the wiser. And it's just, it ends up being a habitual pattern for that person in the relationship just to do everything because it's just the way it's always been. So unless you can actually say, no, I need to work out what's serving me because I'm exhausted, I'm feeling run down, I'm feeling like um, I'm not showing up as my best self in this relationship. And I know that if I can do half an hour walk in the morning, you know, on my own with no children, with no husband or no wife, whatever your partner is, 
I will feel a lot better for the day. I know that if I can sit down and have um, or, or have my meals cooked for me at least once or twice a week, so I'm not having to do it seven nights a week, that would make me feel so much more rested. Like really communicate and, and you know, articulate what your boundaries are. So I want you to think to yourself, like, how have you been showing up for yourself? But how have you been showing up in your relationships? What judgments have you been making or preconceived ideas about how your relationship unfolds? And can you change that narrative? What role have you been playing rather than just showing up as your best self and accepting that doing all the things is a blessing and it's just part of being in a relationship, which is a blessing in itself? What boundaries have you set for yourself and have you communicated those boundaries with your children, with your partner, with your colleagues, with your friends? Because once you do that, it will eliminate a whole lot of stress in your life. And we know stress dysregulates hormones. And what boundaries still need to be set? Have a think about that. Like where, where do you want to set boundaries, but you haven't done that yet? And why haven't you done it? Do a lot of self-reflecting because a lot of self-reflection will go a long way in how you show up in your relationships. And how can you communicate these things more effectively in your relationships? And then my third step to balancing your hormones so that you can create beautiful, blissful relationships or balancing and improving your relationships to create and balance beautiful hormones because they go hand in hand is how can you have more fun and how can you create more impact in your life by having more fun? Because trust me, it really does this. And I think we just get into a rut as we get into adulthood and we forget to have fun or we don't think it's a priority because priority is paying bills, it's working, it's getting food on the table, it's managing the children, it's all of those things. Yes, but having fun is a huge, huge priority. And trust me, I get stuck in the rut. You know, I am working, like even at the moment, I'm trying to get all of these things in place for my Ivan Alchemist launch for the new year. Um, and I'm about to fly to Bali soon. So I'm, and the kids are on holidays and I'm trying to get all these things done and I get stuck in a bit of a rut. And then I have to pull myself out and go, all right, Harmony, what are we going to do today? That's fun. Because when you just go into mum mode, work mode, 24 seven overwhelm sets in, and you're not impacting your life in a positive way. And you're certainly not impacting your relationships in a positive way. And often I haven't done it this week, but in the past, and I have done it multiple times, actually, I've identified what I find really fun and what I can do with my children who also think that's fun. And for us, it's actually going on water slides. I love water slides. And so when I get stuck in a rut and I'm feeling really overwhelmed, I've even pulled the kids out of school one day and I'm like, Dudes, we are going, especially uh, I did this after my exams. I just had um, uni exams for my master's degree. And I was like, we are going next week to Wet n Wild and going on all the water slides because I just need to have a lot more fun. I need to bring that into my life. So think, when is the last time you had a lot of fun? But you might need to also think, what is it that I find fun? Because if you don't know, it's hard to find fun. And if you're not having enough fun in your life, then you're really missing out. And I really, really hope that if you take away anything from this live training is that you can write down five things that you find fun and that you schedule at least one of those things in this week. So as I mentioned, having more fun will create greater impact in your life. And when you create more impact in your life, it helps create greater impact in the lives of others. So life, it does get serious. As we get older, we forget how to have fun. And in relationships, we forget how to have fun together as well. So how can you have fun together? And then if we just keep going on and on without inviting more fun into the relationship, that, that spark that got us together that often fades away. And then when that starts to fade away, we have to say goodbye to libido. 
So having fun first is a really good way to improve your sex life. So make sure you have fun, not just in the bedroom, but out of the bedroom, because it will lead to fun times in the bedroom as well. So one of the best ways to lift our vibration or beat stress is, yep, go and have fun. So if it's been too long, please just ask yourself why. Life is meant to be enjoyed, especially with the ones you love. So don't give up on having fun and watch how much it will improve your relationship. Because when you have fun, you step into the life that you were meant for. And when you show up for a life full of fun and adventure, you create that deeper impact in your life and the lives of others. You get to enjoy the precious moments with the people you love. And once I read this book called The Five Regrets of the Dying, and they all alluded to wanting to have more fun with the people that they love. That was their regret, okay? It wasn't to work more, to build like a huge empire or whatever it is. It was to have more fun with the people that they love. So if you want to improve your hormones and you want to improve your relationship, go and have more fun with the people that you love. Fun settles our cortisol levels. It boosts our serotonin levels. It helps us feel content and have a good sleep. It feeds our dopamine and our happy hormones, and it assists with our overall hormonal imbalance. So please go and schedule in at least one times a week, something that you can do just for fun, whether that be alone or with your family. So beautiful people, we have covered three ways and within those three ways, we have covered multiple ways, but our three ways is optimizing our hormonal health and getting down to the root cause, um, creating empowering belief shifts about ourselves and our relationship. And the third one is to have more fun and create deeper impact in your life. So these are the three things that you can really do to help improve your relationships and balance your hormones. When you consciously make the purpose-driven changes in your life, you will be able to show up as your higher self in all areas of your life, be that relationships, work, business, catch up with friends or wherever in your life, you know, you want to show up. So if you would like to know more about um, my higher self, higher self methodology and how it can further help you with your hormones and you would like to work with me one-to-one in the new year. I'm all booked out for the rest of 2022. But if you'd like to work with me in the new year so that you can excel in all areas, please reach out in the DMs or book in for a free clarity call and we can book you in because I have limited, limited numbers next year for my one-to-one, um, working one-to-one with people. I have expanded my Ayurveda Alchemist program, which certifies you as an Ayurveda holistic health coach. And it is, I, I just absolutely love it. It's such a passion of mine. And it's just a really beautiful, brilliant program. And a lot of my energy is going into that. Um, but I still do offer one-to-one -one with clients to help them uh, manage their hormones and their health. So if that is you, please reach out. Um, or if you are interested in becoming an Ayurveda alchemist and up-leveling your business, your health business by becoming a holistic health coach also, please reach out. Would love, love to have you in the program. Like I said, it's bigger and better than ever at the moment. So it's a fantastic time to join and you get last lifetime access to um, the live trainings and the private support group as well. So yes, if you are a health or wellness coach, practitioner or healer who would like to create deeper impact in your client's lives with a holistic framework, please reach out and I'll share with you how. If not, have fun, <laughs> go have fun with the people you love and have a beautiful, wonderful day. I, like I said, if you are watching this in the Ayurveda and Women's Health Sisterhood community, um, I am going to Bali at the end of the week. And so I won't be live in here in the next couple of weeks, I don't believe. Um, but I love, love all you guys in the community. And if you're not in the community and you're listening to this somewhere else, please come and join us in the Ayurveda and Women's Health Sisterhood. Namaste, beautiful people.